Hello there. Sir from 17 once again. This is a balls deep of a game called Battle Chasers Night War. Uh, as you can see from the file in front of you and the rather snazzy music, uh, I've played a little bit of this game. 2.2 hours it says, I'm in the Forest Vale, I've got three characters, we're all level 7. Let's jump balls deep into this, shall we? This has been played on the PC, for anybody wondering. Not that it makes a difference. Doesn't really afford me much luxury when it comes to controls or anything too unique. And this is... I think it was some kind of funded uh, RPG made over the comics by the dude who was the creator of Darksiders. So if you're familiar with war and death in those video games, you might recognize a lot of this art style. The guy who was in charge, I forgot the dude's name, I used to know it, but the person who was doing the character designs and the world design and the aesthetic design of those games, uh, this is the comic that he actually was made famous for or more well known for. Uh, called Battle Chasers, and I've never read it, but I always wanted to, because I thought it looked pretty cool. And this game's taking like 50 hours to load, which is amazing, so we get to talk a little bit longer, as I, if I broke the game. Okay guys, we finally got past all the crashing and all the weird loading screen that wouldn't load, and we're on the world map. But as you can hear, the, the audio is doing some stammering at the moment. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Uh, I'm just going to double check my, uh, my task manager to see if my computer's doing something. Currently, at this moment in time, uh, our CPU is at 10%, we're at 57% physical memory. I think I might just have to... We've got an NV display container, you can fuck off. I don't know why you're there, you piece of garbage. Oh, I can't do that, apparently. Well, that's obviously something important. Um, anything else I can get rid of? Go away. Eat my dick. There's no reason for my computer to be shitting the bed. There you go. Thanks a bunch. Right. This is Battle Chasers Night War. As you can see from this little screening thing, I'm these dudes moving around. Uh, I forgot what button it is you press, because I haven't played it in a while. But you can swap between the characters. Each of the characters has a unique traversal ability, but in all honesty, I don't really understand it too well. Because I can't really seem to make them regenerate. I think you have to maybe sleep at an inn. But the first thing that struck me with this game is how beautiful the art style is on this world map. I love this cross-hatching cross kind of sketch work that they've done to uh, isolate some stuff. I'm a big fan of that font as well, the font looks beautiful. But you move around the spots like this, you'll notice that the spots have... Oh, something's happening because we can't go that way, so... There, there is dialogue in the game, and there is spoken word dialogue, but for the most you'll be reading some of it. But do you see how there's these spots here? Each of these spots is kind of a, sta a step on the Monopoly board of traversing the world. And you can get random battles, but it will tell you. I love how the clouds look. Look at these clouds. That shit's just really well designed. I like that a lot. And over there, uh, that's the town where we've come from. But really striking artwork, really visually nice looking place. But over here is the dungeon that we're doing next. I've done one dungeon so far. It got pretty tough towards the end of it, so hopefully we can uh, keep this interesting. The Banog's Cave. A clearing in the forest leads directly to the mouth of a cave. An unusual green light can be seen glistening on the stones. Enter Banog's Cave. Let's do this. So this game has a really cool thing where when you enter a dungeon you can choose the difficulty of the dungeon usually. Uh, this one didn't give me the option and depending on the difficulty that you pick will depend on how good the loot is in the dungeon and you can replay them on even harder uh, difficulties once you beat them. So there's there's this incentive to come back and conquer zones you've already conquered, and I read somewhere online that it is indeed randomised when you go back in them, so it's not like you're just going to be bored doing the same thing a million times. But this is when you're inside an instance of the world. When you enter dungeons, you can move around, use your character. When you press uh, X, you'll swap between your guys, and they each have different moves, and I've actually got my moves back, because you can notice on the spacebar, I can use the different moves. Uh, but let me show you some, some of the stuff that's in the game. So, you move around this bit, you traverse, we're going to be fighting some people coming up, and then we have the, the RPG robust section of it. So, here's our party. We've got Garrison, we've got Gully, we've got Calibretto. I don't know these people because I don't know the comic, but inside of here, each of these characters has equipment, skills, perks, combat abilities, and so on and so forth. So, for his equipment, we get a weapon, we get an armor, we get a ring, a neck, and a trinket. And... You find a lot of different loot, it's all coloured in the very, you know, generic, stereotypical, ubiquitous way. 
and each of them has some kind of passive bonus that they it, they give you or some kind of special bonus that you might want to wear it for so on and so forth and as you can see there's there's differing ones so if you're kind of a guy who likes to obsess over equipment and min max and pick all the fun stuff there's definitely that for you here and there's an interesting mix of different things so if you'll notice there that one has a serrated blade uh, which uh, applies some extra properties to it so on and so forth so Early on the game seems really, really simple and, and not that interesting, but the more I played, the more it's opening up and I definitely see that there's potential for a much stronger, much more interesting and strategic combat system. And there is a, quite a lot you can pick from in, in these particular windows as we choose between skills which can do various things as you can see. There's a parry one there, but it's not very good in my opinion. It's not the parry that I like, uh, but you've got full ability to, to go nuts with this and, and, and mess with all kinds of menus if that's your thing and work towards unlocking stuff. There's a lot of carrot on the stick in this game it seems but uh, one of the reviews I read said that it gets really grindy later on and I don't know if that's just reviewers being reviewers and you know having a tough time because most of them don't seem to be very good at the games they play or if that's just a part of the gameplay but if you're playing an RPG and, you, and you're complaining about grinding there's a rich history of JRPGs where that is literally what they did. And I've never been a big fan of the grindier RPGs, but we have to admit that it's kind of part for the course sometimes. Always better when you don't need to, always better when they come up with some interesting ways to, to make that not happen. This is the fishing menu, by the way. You can fish in this game, it's kind of cool. All of the artwork, all the production values, all of the visual design is absolutely stunning in this game. It's very stylized, you might like it, you might not, but it just... The game looks beautiful. I can't remember if you can run don't think you can run. I think this is as fast as we get when we're in a dungeon. And the mouse doesn't seem to do anything either, so you don't need to use the mouse at all. You can just plug a controller in if you'd prefer. Uh, I like the mouse because I like mouse and keyboard a lot. And in combat you can pick your moves and things, and I can swap between these guys, which is quite cool, if you want to use your mouse for that, so you can you can do stuff like that, but for the most it doesn't seem to have much of an effect in the game. So here's something to pick up with E. There are claw and bite marks on the cover of this book. Perhaps it was used in self-defense before the author died. A few notable excerpts. Door has been in disrepair for decades, perhaps. Old as the Iron Outpost. Something odd about the place, as if there were a, another world beneath this one. Maybe it's my imagination. Runes. Something deep. Need something to respond. Uh, it responds to. The rest of the pages were nibbled and eaten by small animals. So there's a little bit of the old fiction. You know, some interesting stuff to read, if that's your thing. We can touch this. This mysterious obelisk hums with magical energy. It must require some, something of astonishing power to use it correctly. So in other words, you can't do that yet. Let's walk over here. What we got now? Yeah. Something. So on PC, the game runs really well because it's not the most demanding game. Um, I don't know when I opened Bandicam, but I think it was running at like 400 frames or something ridiculous, which is always nice. Before we get the obligatory, oh, your eye can only see two and a half frames, and that's when they're sent to you directly by Emperor Penguins from Jesus. So, opening chests gives you some tasty loot. We got a rock crusher fist, a chrome cover, some crystals, faintly glowing powder, veil herbs, and common parts. So, lots of good fun stuff to get out of the chests. The chests don't have the best opening, but I think that's because we live in a world where loot crates seem to have more production value than the fucking games they're in which I find to be very strange, but I do like the opening. They definitely put some satisfying audio and visual design on that stuff to get the kiddies buying it and stealing Mummy's credit card. That's a nice effect, isn't it? To show us where we are, just gives a little bit of the old transparency. I think it works well. Do you think the items that we just picked up then are going to enable us to mess with this obelisk? It gave us some kind of strange fist, so I would wager that that will let us work this. And there might be a little bit of talking coming up, and then hopefully we'll get some fighting. Let's check it. Right, maybe I have to uh, go into my equipment. So I believe it'll be for Gully, because she seems to be the main character. Strong enough to crush the toughest of rocks. There we go, look at the increase on this. It lowers her HP and her stamina, but it gives her incredible defense and incredible damage, right? But minus stunning blow. I don't know what that means. Can I, like... Maybe the, her weapon usually has a property that's a stunning blow, but because this is so powerful, this one doesn't. There, there is quite a lot of interesting nuance to the combat. It's just early on. It re oh, that's why. This weapon has stunning blow. Has a 10% chance to hit and stun an enemy for a short time. That's what it means. The knockout gloves are pretty good for that. 
So, does that let us now crush this? It does not. Okay, shit. Right, what did we get in here, maybe? They're healing items, that can't be right. Well, did we get anything else? A key. Opens the door to Banog Cave. Now, we just used that. Some of these menus are a bit crazy. We need to repair the blink station using a mana core. Qual said there's one in Banog Cave, east of town. So we're going for a mana core in this place. I wonder if I've missed, like, a, a super obvious turn somewhere. Oh, it's probably the other way, isn't it, that I didn't go. Because I, uh, I always like to go left. It's one of those neurosis that I have, so I'm assuming that over here. So that's uh, one of those abilities that you get. I think they want you to use it to dodge random battles, but uh, I just use it to move fast, and then I get angry because when I use all five, you can't do it anymore. So there's a nice wellspring here of something. Is it a boss? Please be a boss. The boss fights are cool. Here we go. We're fighting. So, battle begins. God, this game looks nice. Doesn't this game look nice, guys? Very pretty looking game. So, battle is is thusly. Here's your bad guy's HP in the bottom right. Lesser Manor Elemental, he's got just under 500 HP. He's level 6, so we're technically higher level than him. Over here is the hierarchy of turns. If you're a fan of Final Fantasy X, this game uses a similar system of showing you when you're about to attack, so on and so forth. Here's our, uh, the stuff we can do. So, there are basic attacks, like your gut punch, there are defensive attacks like that one, and that one I think is obviously a healing one. It's all colour coded as you would expect in an RPG. But where this game gets slightly interesting is over here in the bottom left. Do you see how we have a... that's our magic points or our action points, and then there's this extended part of the bar over here that doesn't fill. When you attack with normal attacks, you build up this commodity this transient commodity that you can then use to accentuate your attacks and you can use it in place of MP. So there's this interesting system that kind of reminds me a lot of Resonance of Fate where you can do a move that will increase your damage potential but you have to stack it first and then pay off later. So it's kind of, you know, an inheritance of, of action and I'll show you some of the other places. So the abilities for this character, he's got some... When you click on them, they tell you what they do. So it's very fast, so you can see it in the turn hierarchy over here, that it's quite quick. It deals 44 damage over 4 hits. If sundered or bleeding, the enemy takes additional damage. So that's a move you might want to use once somebody's put those effects on them to get that added extra oomph. And each of them does something a little different. You can kind of knock yourself out and have fun with it. And then down here we have the burst, which is this special move once you fill this bar, and we don't quite have that yet, so... We will just start off quite simply by smacking this dude with the gut punch. This deals 27 damage, applies sunder, increases physical damage by 10% for 3 turns, and generates 10 overcharge. Overcharge is that commodity that I was talking about. So now that we have that, um, hopefully we'll be able to do some fun stuff. So, there's the big hit. Quick question, guys. How many people, seeing that green font just then, thought of Overwatch? I don't play Overwatch, but I've watched quite a lot of it. <laughs> See? And uh, that reminded me a lot of it when I first saw it. My first thought was, wow, that, that, you know, the visual design is very reminiscent of that. So I'm just wondering if anybody else got the same thing. So let's do something fun. We can do protective stuff. Scattershot hits multiple people, but we don't need it to. Damage taken 10% for three turns. That could be good. Quake does incredible damage. We just hit it with a big quakey thing. Yeah, let's hit it with a big quake fist. You don't have to click on the enemy to do the attack when you're here. You can just press the space bar, and the space bar will skip your turn, apparently. Is that what I just fucking did? Oops. You can press, I think it might be E then. One of the buttons on the controls enables you to just pick the option, but I, I fucked that up, so. <laughs> don't listen to me, guys. It's been a week or so since I played this, but here's my favourite character for obvious reasons, the big burly dude with the sword who's clearly inspired by somebody like Guts. So, with this guy, we can do these moves and build a ton of overcharge and a ton of bleed, and then we can cash in with some moves later on. This is a really fast attack as well, so we're going to hit him with a nice sting. Is it E that you do? It is E. There you go. 20 overcharge, 20 hits, and he bleeds for almost 20 damage. Oh no, you can do space bar, it's just that move takes one turn. My bad folks, I was I was being so Ooh Jesus, that guy hits hard. Damn that hurt. What does that do? Removes two debuffs from an ally, you don't need that. 
Healing away, but how much is that? Healing only for 110. Yeah, do that, dog. We need you to do that. Back to us. We're gonna stack even more of this fantastic ability. Boom, sting him again. In there, 34 hit crit, 20 overcharge. Got that bleeding on him in two turns. God, this game looks pretty. And you might be thinking, well, what was your first expectations of this, or your first impressions of this game, Chris, when you played it? Because normally when I do balls deeps, we're not midway into them, even though that's originally where the title came from, because that's what they were. My first impression was it was simple. And the reason it's simple is I would have loved for there to be a timing-based critical system, where when I attack, if I press the button at the right time, I get a bonus property or I get an extra attack, something like Legends of Dragoon, you know, along those lines, like Valkyrie Profile. Uh, not Valkyrie Profile, sorry, um, Vagrant Story. I would love a system, you know, like Squall's Gun, when you attack on Final Fantasy VIII. Give me something that keeps me in the game when I play. Um, Valkyrie Profile does have a defense mechanic like that, so that technically still counts. But on both sides, I love this idea of being able to defend and attack with skillful timing and be better than the average player. But this game doesn't seem to have gone that direction, so we're just going to do the traditional tried and tested, you know, knock the tits off of this dude as best we can. And uh, Quakefist did some really good damage to him, but it's kind of slow, so... So this is interesting as well. This converts 75% of the damage into a damage shield. Um, the shield enables you to guard your HP from attacks. Uh, I should show that off to give you an idea of some of the more strategic moves you can do here. So he bled massively just then, but then he got a bunch of defense ups, which is not so good. But we're just going to hit him with Sting again, because I'm stacking all of this overcharge, because I like it. Boom. And the bleed's going to tick. There we go, 46 HP and a nice big shield. So do you see how the big fella now has this white bar just here? What this reminds me of quite recently is Tupperware. Uh, there was a move on South Park, the, stick of, uh, the, the fractured butthole, where when you played as Token, you could swap places with people to get them out of danger, and when I, I think when you did it, it gave him a ton of armor. And it was a really, really powerful move, and you might not have seen me use it too much, but it's very, very good, and I recommend it highly. So do we have anything that can debuff them? I wonder... Increases physical damage taken by 10%. I want to obliterate this guy. We haven't done any of this big stuff. Oh, that's very fast. This deals extra damage if he's bleeding. He's bleeding. We should totally do that, right? Is there anything that crushes his... Applies Gaia's grasp on target for three turns. Any allies attacking a target with Gaia's grasp will be healed. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So if you inflict him with this, you can use it instead of healing. So the next few turns your buddies get, they're going to get some HP back. That sounds really, really cool. But we're just going to stick to Obliterate, because you haven't seen it, I don't think, and it looks pretty cool, so... EXODIA! OBLITERATE! God, he nearly died from the bleed. Smacks him, and then hits him like Barrett. That really reminds me of Barrett. And what we're going to do now, we have 60 overcharge. That's maximum for guts at the moment. And we're just going to do... I think it's... Is it Warblade? So if you look at this, consume up to 40 overcharge, dealing 124 damage and adding 0.7 damage for each overcharge used. So we're going to use all our overcharge on this move to get an extra overcharged Warblade. That's what we were doing. We were cashing in the overcharge to do extra damage with this move. Not that it was even remotely necessary. We could have just attacked normally and killed this dude like five turns ago, but you know what we're on about. And then we'll just taunt with this one because I'm hoping he's going to kill it. There we go, taunt. There's the bleed. What's he gonna do? Big hits, big damage. Bang. Boom. Good night. So something you didn't see then, which I really like about this game, is it has a system of how you kill the enemies affects your AXP. So if you double kill, you get an experience bonus. If you overkill, you get an experience bonus. And if you one-hit kill, you get an experience bonus. And you can kind of use this to your advantage. So if you come up against a group of scrubs who you can kill in one touch, you want to have Garrison use his blade that hits everybody at the same time, and then you'll get one-hit kills on each of them, and a triple kill bonus, and maybe even an overkill bonus, and get way more normal experience. And what it does is, because the combat has got strategy to it, but it's nothing too demanding, you start thinking about how you kill the enemies and how you prepare them for their own deaths so that you get the best reward. And I think that's a great system. I really like that. But let's continue onwards, see what we get. We got enemy slain, some experience. We got a bunch of stuff and 38 pennies. Apparently money in this game is very difficult to come by. 
Once again, that's that review. Elemental. That is quite unusual. Something on this island is stirring up trouble. Forget the blacksmith. Let's try dropping the mana core into the blink station ourselves. Most of the voice acting in this game is pretty good, but I'm not a fan of Garrison's voice. The less we need the townsfolk, the better. An interesting thought. I agree. The station was in the southeast corner of town, near the lake. Let's go. So, now we've got the mana core, we can exit the cave. This wasn't a very elaborate dungeon, so it's not really a good showcase of the dungeons, but it gives you an idea of what happens when you go into the instanced part of the game. But let's push onwards, come out of here, and maybe I can go to where it just said. I feel like there might be a sprint, but I don't know the button. And I don't want to press too many buttons just in case the game crashes, because it already crashed three times. And it hasn't crashed when I'm playing, it only crashes on startup, for some strange reason. In that load. Very weird. But now we're back out onto the map, and we've got this crazy thing in Majigama. It wants us to go over here, and I'm assuming it's going to open up these panels and let us fast travel across the world. That's what we've just done. We've got the capacity to fast travel. But I love, I love the shading on the mountains. It's, it's, it looks so messy, but awesome. And it's very tricky to do right. Because if you do it too much, it just doesn't look cool. But if you don't do it enough, it just looks like a child did it. But the right amount, tastefully done, with nice use of negatives, makes it look fantastic. What does that say? Examine the well. Expect the well. Drink from the well. You feel refreshed. But each of these spots here that you can see designate shops and people that you can talk to. You can go to the inn and talk to people. You can go to the blacksmith and talk to people and buy weapons and stuff. Um, all that kind of, you know, standard RPG tomfoolery. And then we can inspect the strange machina. A flat round machine sits quietly in the earth. Dust and dirt are spread evenly across its surface. Insert the radiant mana core. The blink station powers to life. And there we go. We have unlocked fast travel. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Came out of nowhere. Can I just jump to that place we've never been to before? I can. What do you think that the chances are that this guy's gonna body me? Should we see if we get completely murdered? Here we go. Wow, this guy looks ridiculous. He's our level, though. He's our level. Slow and weak. He looks so cool, dude. He's got a tiny face. Huge sword, tiny face. Anyway, so let us proceed to butter him. Oh my god, we're not fully healed. Fook. Right, this guy is fist this guy. We can see if it turned out to be a good strategy. Oh no, we're good, we're good. Unless this guy one hit kills everybody, I think we're gonna be just fine. What is that? 56 and reduces gully's damage taken for 10% for three turns. Very fast. That one's only fast. Let's try this one, we've not seen it yet. Boom! Get you sent in there, boy! Boom! Dyer's grasp. And he bleeds. Here he comes. Dude! That looks cool. You know what else looks cool? This. Boom. So these are your kind of limit breaks, your overdrives, whatever you want to call them. And he's done. So he wasn't ridiculous. I thought, uh, judging by how cool he looked, he was going to kick us in the dick, but he was manageable. We got 16 dollars. 16 Krugerrands. Canadian rubles. It wants us to go there, I think. Camera's a bit unresponsive at times when you're moving like that, when you're looking around. Dead Lysolots? Careful. Detecting arcane energies in the vicinity. It's probably what killed these Lysolots. I don't know what a Lysolot is. They're all surrounding that tent over there. Maybe someone needs our help. Come on, let's go. Let's do this makeshift camp. Is anybody here? Oh, damn. We call her Itty Titty Fairy. Where are my manies? I'm Mercury, the Enchantress. Greetings. May I inquire as to what you are doing out here? I was collecting materials in the Path of the Fangs up north. It's not as friendly as I remember. I would planned to use the West Bridge, but something destroyed it after I crossed, and the Blink Station, well, that's been dead for years. We were able to repair it. Really? Well, aren't we a resourceful bunch? We are. Did you kill the Lysolots nearby? They got a little too curious for their own good. I gave them plenty of warning, of course. 
They're awfully ferocious. How'd you manage that? With my rocking boobs, that's how. I have my secrets, just as you do. Still, I'd be stuck here if it weren't for you. Allow me to teach you basic enchantments as repayment for your kindness. Come see me in harm's way sometime. I have more tricks up my sleeve. She's actually wearing sleeves. It's good to know. So, we've got an enchantress now, and we've got glamour and transformations. Interesting. So that's more expounding on how much you can do in this game, which is kind of cool. Something to pick up. A nice veil thing in some condensed manner. What's this? More shit to pick up. There's a lot of shit on the map to pick up, by the way. Look at that. That's Oh, that means that he's super hard. That could be cool. Because this is about the end of the Balls Deep. I've shown you what the game is. I've given you an idea of the combat, the traversal. And I don't really want to spoil too much because this is exactly what you spend most of the game doing. So there's no point. So what we'll do is we'll come over to this fella and he'll kick the tits off us. That sounds like a good idea, right? See how hard a hard guy is. So it's just a big blob of shit and a bat, really? I thought it was going to be a big hard guy. I guess not. Appearances can be deceptive. I remember Yan Island. Bastards. Right. So there's more than one, so I want to use something that hits a lot of people. Preferably. That hits both of them. He has to wait his turn to do it. No, that's not so good. Let's test the water, shall we? How tough is this dude? How tough is this dude? This doesn't look that hard. I thought the skulls meant that they were going to shit in my mouth. They didn't shit in my mouth, you know? My mouth is shit free. Now this guy's... No, no. What is going on? I thought they were going to be super tough. <laughs> what did the skull mean? Is this a hunt? Is this some kind of objective? Maybe it's just... Maybe I'm supposed to do this. It might be some kind of side quest. Yeah, they were not difficult. That is not a... Oh! It's an endurance fight. Okay. There's two fights here. And this is where it gets tough. That's pretty cool. I can get behind that. Stab that ugly spider. Fuck you, spider. <laughs> 30 HP done. It's the robot that's scary. Robot does big damage. Spider just bled really well. Good to see. Do that. There we go. He's about to cast feed. Ooh, 118 damage. That hurt. There's his blade. Don't kill him, don't kill him. Don't kill him. Nearly killed him. Right, so. Can you kill that thing now, please? Yay, Spider's guns up. What have we got, buddy? Can we do this? Try that. It's very slow, though. Don't kill the green guy. Please don't kill the green guy. Good stuff. Hit that guy. Nobody cares about that one. That gets rid of buffs, we don't need that. We want healing on yourself. And with you... Scattershot hits two people, so let's do that. Here he comes! Oh! Big damage! And I do a scattershot on nobody. Ooh, that was good damage too! He does the heal, nice and simple. I don't know what the clock means next to us, maybe we're... Oh nice, we've got 20% haste for two battles, that's cool. Let's test him with the sting. Put some bleed on him. And then with this person. Like a guard punch. Bleeds again. Big damage on somebody. Jesus Christ. That was big damage. Can we kill you please? Boom. Nice gut punch. And he's done. So yeah. That symbolizes that it's more, ba more than one battle, that icon. It's a double battle. I imagine that they'll get quite tricky later on. Get our loots. Good stuff. Combat rewards. And then we can continue moving through the area. But guys, there you go. That is Battle Chasers Night War. Available right now on the consoles and on PC. It's a really, really cool looking game. And it's got some good stuff in it. I have to say though, I feel like unless you get really into the story or really into the loot systems of it, I found myself getting a little bored. And it's not to say that it's bad in any way, it's perfectly acceptable at what it does. It's just I think I'm at that point where I need a little bit something more in my RPG to keep me hooked. But it's a, it's a shame because I think there's a lot to like here. And maybe you'll love it, so pick it up. Thank you for watching. You take care now. Have we crashed?
No, not crashed, just the longest load on this planet, and the bar isn't moving. Awesome. It wouldn't be a balls deep unless something went wrong, right? But it gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit, and you might never see this because the way I'm capturing it's kind of awkward because OBS doesn't like this game at all. So, fast forward, you know, quite a few years after Darksiders is kind of put out to pasture, re-picked up, and then they're making another one, uh, you have this game, which is kind of the origins of where the artists came from. And I don't know how affiliated the developers are with them, but I would hope that they're working in tandem with them to make this game. Uh, the game is a very standard, very beautiful looking uh, RPG where you move around a world unveiling a storyline with a whole host of different mechanics and there we go, we're actually not responding now. Oh, we're responding again. We were non-responding, now we're responding. Um, it's never taken this long to load, so yeah, normally it loads in about a second, but as I mentioned, I've been having problems today. It might be my PC, I think I might need to clean it. I guess we'll find out together. But you, you move around a world map uh, like you would... Um, you know, the old school Final Fantasies, and there are certain areas where you can stop off and things will happen and random battles will occur. And then there are these dungeons, and inside the dungeons you, you go into an instanced area, which I think is randomised, and you move through this dungeon picking, picking up loot, fighting opponents, unveiling whatever the reason you are for being there. There's a bit of dialogue, you come out of them, and then you move around the map again, and you're, you're going on your quest to do whatever it is we're doing in the game. Uh, there are moments when you go to towns and you can do hunting and, you know, picking up kind of bounty hunt kind of things, speaking to various merchants that I'm assuming are part of the game's lore and what have you. you there's probably a crafting component somewhere. There's pretty interesting upgrade systems and equipment systems that I've played with, but uh, other than that, this is about as fucking standard as it gets, and I'm, I'm officially pissed off now. This is annoying me. What the fuck are you doing, video game? How hard is it to load this shitty-looking fucking game? A Commodore could load this. What is it doing? Like fucking perpetual loading as soon as I start recording. Why? Look at this fucking bar, dude. It's like a, it's like my dick compared to black dick. Look at it. I'm annoyed. <clears throat> Fuck you. Eat my shit, you fucking garbage game. I hope you die. I hope your fucking family dies. Fuck off. Not responding, cunty game. Oh.